Hello my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. We know, right? How are we all feeling, you guys? At the time of me filming, it is Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day to all of my lovers, loved, beloved, divinely loved beings out there. Oh my goodness. It was actually, this Valentine's Day for me was pretty remarkable. I had a lot of fun. I had this new um, archery set that I ordered and had delivered and it arrived maybe two days ago. We set it up and we were shooting it out into the backyard and we were aiming for the, one of the pumpkins that has been there since October, which by the way, do you guys still have your Halloween decorations up? Is that just me? Literally, I'm wearing Halloween attire, which is my usual. I just think that's who I am. That's what I do. I'm, that's nothing new. But I just feel like my pumpkins this year that I had out since Halloween are still thriving. Well, they were until I started shooting it with the archery. With the bow and the arrow. But that's neither here nor there. So I just let me know down in the comments. You guys, if you um, if you still have Halloween decorations up, or maybe Christmas decorations, maybe Christmas is more your thing. Halloween has always been for me year round. I, that doesn't that doesn't stop. <laughs> like can't stop, won't stop with the Halloween thing. Having said that, you guys, let's dive into this chart, this full moon. I do want to say that lately, I've been really taking my time with working on anything that I've been working on. If I'm working on a fixed candle for my clients, when I'm working on the book, which is almost done, you guys, thank you for being so patient with me on that. I really have been taking my time. And a lot of that is because I'm, over time and in my life and my journey, I've learned about balance and making sure that I'm balanced. I can't give, I want to be able to give everything that it is that I have, but from experience, it's very important that I don't do that. So I just find it so remarkable, so beautiful, so stunning, so sparkling that I've learned at this point in my life, Six of Wands at the base of the deck, that the best thing to ensure my success, not just financial success or attention or popularity or anything like that, success for me is defined by how I feel and by the time I've produced or given whatever it is that I've produced, whatever it is I've been working on, whatever it is I'm sharing with the world. And, you know, I move differently now. I find that so amazing. Why I find this so amazing is because this full moon is happening in the sign of Leo. And Leo rules what we're able to create our self-worth and our self-value. And if we are feeling like we're insufficient or incomplete or, or unwhole or we're... Oh, I don't want to say too shy, but we are shying away from sharing our light because we don't want to blind other people or we're holding back our light in some way because we have shame or self-worth issues or self-doubt. That Leo energy that, that, that wants to light up in the chart gets diminished. Leo rules what we're able to create. It's our creativity, our creation, our self-worth, and the understanding that we know that we're significant and that we're worth what we're what we're creating or these ideas that we have or the and also rules children our children are worth being seen or worth being heard or worth you know investing in in some way and that they they have a voice and a light that should be shown and should be shared right it's our ability to create and to to give to produce you know and share that with the world that could be a project, that could be a hobby that it is that brings you joy and happiness and fulfillment. It could be your actual children who are, who are the loves of your life or the light of your life. So with this Leo full moon, something is absolutely being activated when it comes to what are you creating and do you feel like it's worth being shared? And if you don't have an idea maybe like let's say you don't have an idea of something that you want to create and contribute to the world maybe it's something that you can receive at this moment in time that has to do with your ability to have fun what i love right now and this is kind of tricky for some people but we're going to keep it 100 is that neptune is falling in the sign of pisces and has been for quite some time it's been creating a lot of you know tumultuous energies within my own chart specifically and things that i've been dealing with but 
I'm wondering how Neptune has been, the Neptune transit has been vibing for you guys. For me, it's an everyday process. But with Neptune squaring off with the part of fortune and the sign of Jupiter, Jupiter rules our ability to travel, explore, educate ourselves, expand our knowledge, explore our spirituality, have fun, and um, tap into our own inner wisdom, our own inner higher self. That conversation that is that we have with God and our how we process that information and, and take it. You know, it's our, our internal understanding of what how spirit speaks to us. And when the part of fortune squares off, part of fortune in uh, Sagittarius squares off with Neptune at the time of the full moon, we are without a doubt tapping into the intuitive sense, our sensitivities, our heightened vibe, higher love, unconditional love, giving and, re and receiving of a higher vibration in ways that is appropriate for us to extend our gifts to others, extend our light to others, and also to give that to ourselves. So how can you play? How can you be creative? How can you find joy or infuse joy in your everyday life in a way that is soothing and and lifts your energy up and and encourages you you know what this is good for me i i love the life that is that i'm living i'm happy to be here i'm i'm i am i'm, I'm enjoying this at this point in history guys looking at the chart especially you're in a square saturn so much of our existence has been revolving around the breaking down of the the foundation the core foundation of who we have defined ourselves as human as human beings generationally right after generation after generation this is why the world feels so heavy at times is because years ago which i've talked about on my youtube channel we started actively as a direct result of what's going on in the planets we started bulldozing the powers that be the government our society our way of life our way of thinking and also our psychological processing and how we live we started realizing listen this is suppressing my joy this is suppressing my self-worth we have all these tools and knowledge that is advancing us but somehow we're just so disconnected and we're connected but we're so disconnected and we're finding what works best for us at this time this is awesome but at the t at the same time it's really kind of trapped us in this m hamster wheel of constant progression what does progression mean this could mean like you could be trying to fix certain aspects of yourself that have been abandoned that are wounded maybe inner child wounds maybe working on your psychology psychological healing maybe working on your spiritual purpose why getting a deeper understanding of who you are the breakdown of the family the rebuilding of the family the breakdown of the ego the breakdown of how you identified yourself and the rebuilding all of these things you guys there it's very powerful but it can also be over time it can be absolutely absolutely exhausting and if we're not careful we can get so caught up in the rat race of this is what's expected of me today this is how i'm supposed to perform this is what i need to do for my survival it's very much survival mindset because our safety our root as we know it has actively been destroyed and we are quickly trying to rebuild that it's not just you me your neighbor down the street it's also happening in the government and politics it's also happening to a country you know across the globe it's also happening to it's happening to all of us okay um i do want to say as above so below so anything that's happening on going on in the planets we're going to feel that down here yes of course we're going to talk about the positives and this is why the transformation is going to happen but you guys know that i'm always transparent i'm always going to keep it real with you 100 and yes they these things are good but at the same time they do have a repercussion there's there there is a lingering um impact to this that you are going to feel and over time it can feel monotonous it can feel draining it can feel exhausting you can feel so tired and so worn out you can feel absolutely depleted cue this full moon happening in the sign of leo and i i do understand that full moons can be emotionally tumultuous times we all know that and if you don't know that now you know it can be very emotional uh tumultuous um, tumultuous time for anybody because it brings certain things up to the surface it pushes people way past their comfort zone and the way that they're buttoned up if you think about if i was to wear a corset every day and i would be like oh yes i've got a tiny waist and a fat ass 
And my neighbors are like, oh, yeah, we know Jess. She's got a tiny waist and a fat ass. We know about her, right? Because that's a part of my identity is that corset thing. But everything is bound up. So I'm restricted. I'm confined. But every 28 days, every 28 days, I can't. There's a there's a night when that full moon comes. I just explode out of that corset and my, my belly, my good pasta eating belly just hangs right over my sweatpants. And I'm like, this is who I am. Like, I just can't hold it in any longer. And that's what the full moon is. The full moon is your beautiful belly, your happy Buddha belly hanging over your, your pants and just be like, I worked really hard on this. I don't have to hold this in any longer. So take that Buddha belly and apply that to any aspect of your life. That is what is going to be revealing itself. And it is so freeing sometimes, but it also can be very revealing and then the right circumstances or the wrong cir circumstances, it can make you feel very vulnerable, very seen, very, if someone doesn't love your Buddha belly, it can make you feel attacked. Now, of course, you guys, I'm talking about the Buddha belly as a metaphor. I'm big on metaphors, metaphors here. I'm Virgo moon, Virgo sun, and I'm also Virgo Mars. So spirit finds a wonderful way of t communicating with me through the power of words and I am very good at listening to spirit and hearing with clarity and precision, Virgo vibes, exactly what spirit is saying, okay? So I'm gonna use the Buddha belly as a metaphor, but again, apply that to any aspect of your life. It could be the person who was so buttoned up, so poised and so egocentric and so hard hardened that they say, you know, honestly, nothing really bothers me. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't care about this. This never bothers me. And then all of a sudden, Every 28 days, that full moon, that full moon comes in, honey, and strikes, strikes, strikes it. And you just, everything just explodes out. And you're like, wow, this entire time I thought you were corseted up in your emotions. But the reality is, is that everything's been sucked in this entire time. It's good to see you come out. It's good to see the truth. And that's what the full moon does. Sometimes that full moon and that, you know, explosion in your life, that reveal in your life is something that you're like, whew. Finally, I didn't want to hold that in any longer. I didn't realize I was carrying all this burden or other times you're just kind of like I wish that didn't happen on my date and I wish my belly didn't rock it out so Fast that it pushed the table over my date over and everybody was looking at me like you good you good Chris <laughs> You know what I mean? So again, these are just silly metaphors, but again the full moon it, it just goes to show that sometimes again that full moon can be really quick. It can be really, really fire. It can put you in a in a tricky situation where you're like, holy, holy heck, I didn't see that coming. Um, it could be freeing. It could be liberating, or it could be something that you're just like, whoops, you know, I, I don't like that that happened. Now there could be some emotions that rocket up to the surface, one thousand percent. Why is this? Well, for the for quite some time we had a lot of the personal pan planets retrograde, and now they're all direct. So the feelings that have been repressed for, for a minute are now direct forward and there's no blockages, there's no distractions that are holding them back. That's something that I feel that the astro, astro, astrology community, the spirituality community doesn't talk about um, is what happens after the retrograde and the times after retro, retrogrades have all completed their cycles and then we have a full moon. All of those things that have been so pinned back and pushed in and sucked in now it's just like it's ready to surface it's ready to move forward so the things that were normally holding us back during that retrograde that we might have been might have been fixing or might have been hearing or might have been experiencing now all of a sudden they've had time to settle in they're comfortable in in, in their um respectful homes right so we have uh mercury at the time of the full moon now in the sign of aquarius we have Pluto at the last fucking final degrees of Capricorn. Oh my goodness. The lessons of this Pluto through Capricorn transit. Holy hell. And we also have Mars and Venus almost directly um, conjunct each other in the sign of Capricorn. So there's been so much heavy hardened lessons of being primed, like prepped and poised and pulled together and holding it in and doing what's right and and doing the obligation and showing up for the responsibility and showing up with the heavy hitter or taking on all these extra burdens that you have no choice but to carry maybe even for your own survival and all of a sudden bum you know the corset flies open and you're like listen i've had enough i also just heard spirit say too little too late 
someone might be marching through. I don't know why it feels like a marchation, a marchation with I probably because Saturn can be very like an army here, very stoic, very cold, very dry. So may, they might be coming in with an expectation and being like, now I'm ready, now I'm here, now I want to show up. And it's it's too little, too late. That ship has already sailed, honey. And what where where is this coming from? This is coming from you prioritizing your own happiness, you own your own joy. A lot of you guys have been stomaching the the poison stomaching the problem stomaching someone like you're tolerating something you've been tolerating something and and saying you know i just keep hearing in my head spirit is literally echoing it. it's too little too late it's too little too late it's too little too late if you would have come to me a month ago if you would have brought this energy to me three months ago maybe it would have been a yes but right now it's no it's too little too late i've moved on I'm, I'm focusing on my happiness now i'm focusing on my joy i don't want to find myself in these repetitive toxic patterns where I'm carrying the weight I'm struggling with this burden or I'm struggling with you know carrying us or carrying this and it's not that I've burnt out I just learned enough and all this time passed and now I'm just not taking a step back in, in order to soothe you and your insecurity or or show up for you just because you finally had a revelation I've already that ship has has sailed so I do see that within the chart. I would not be surprised if that answer shocks someone. It may be you or maybe someone else. With Uranus sitting in the sign of Taurus, you've learned a lot in a small amount of time. Uranus is very quick with the lessons that it brings in and the movement that it brings in, and especially Uranus squaring off with Saturn. Saturn, Saturn sitting in the sign of Aquarius. No shade to anyone. I totally understand, man. As a, as a spiritual being and as a person who's looking at the charts i can see it i can see it but there's certain things that i myself won't tolerate so i'm with you we're in the same boat so you know as above so below we're all under the same planets here so but with saturn there's this level of i need to emotion learn how to emotionally detach myself from certain circumstances in order for me to decode what spirit is telling me is right for me at this moment in time and I don't question this is me saying this but also I feel like a lot of you guys saying this I don't question spirits voice when spirit talks to me I've had this is I'm, this is someone saying this out loud this might be you you'll have conversations with your friends conversations with, conversations with your boss conversations with the neighborhood association conversation with whoever and you will tell, you'll be trying to come up with any type of solution, or maybe they're trying to come up with a solution for, for you to make things work. And at some point, when you find that it's not working for Pentacles, that energy has been way too stubborn, way too stubborn. When you find that that energy is not no longer working, then you start talking to the universe, you start talking to your higher self, you start talking to the divine, you start realizing, ha ha ha, Empress Energy, I'm worth more, I deserve more, I want to receive more. I because I I can feel and sense that I need more that because I don't want to survive I want to thrive I can no longer have a conversation with you because when I was talking to spirit spirit told me to leave the situation and to what that's right the full card start over fresh to start a new over a new beginning you guys see me shuffling these cards I'm not making this stuff up okay so with this new, I'm sorry, I said new moon, but with this full moon, sun sitting in the sign of Aquarius and the moon falling in the sign of um, Leo, your pleasure, your happiness, your sunshine is respectfully put first. This means that you have to understand your worth, your self-value to a T so that you are not settling for less and you are discerning about the offerings that come to you. Does this feel like a yes for you or can you say no to certain things? You don't, not everything is your cup of tea, all right? Some things, some people, some situations are literally an allergic reaction for you and that's okay. Last few messages from Spirit, we have Ace of Cups. So there is the opening of the heart. We have Strength card, which is ruled by Leo. Shout out to that energy. We have Five of Wands. What is that you're competing for? What is that you're fighting for? We also have the Knight of Wands. So this has a lot to do with activity, being engaging in things that make that feel fun, that give you life, that give you vibrancy, that 
you you feel like when you're expressing yourself you are really being seen and heard it feels like you're on your own stage but you're not calling attention to yourself in a way that's like egocentric but it's in the way that it is that you deserve some of you guys are a little scared being seen or a little hesitant being seen and the reality is is that you do have special gifts and talents that's your shadow self coming through that moon there's special talents especially through your dark times i wouldn't be surprised if in your own anxiety or your own angst or your own shadow self or in your dream work or subconscious or in your own psychological healing journey you discovered something profound about yourself that just really lights up the world and that is worth shining so when it comes to setting intentions it's interesting i would highly recommend working with the bird of paradise candle this is a fixed candle that can be found within my apothecary which is at found at bahadilife.com this literally taps into nourishment fulfillment joy fruitfulness juiciness in every aspect of your life when it comes to happiness ab abundance blessing I'm also seeing people working with money in abundance, the money candle, 1000%, lunar goddess oil every single time when there's a full moon. I mean, you should just have that on deck, period. That's, even if it's not a full moon, it's just amazing for witches, feminine energy, goddess energy, always. The lunar goddess oil, man, it's, it's just spectacular, always. And it works really well. It's one of the first oils that I created because it literally covers all of the bases that you could ever and it's also one of the best sellers in the, in the, in the apothecary. Uh, what else would I work with? I don't know if about deep healing. Some of you guys are still focusing on that. By all means, do it to it. But I'm seeing a lot of explosive, vibrant, fun energy. If you're working on love and romance, this would be a great time to do that. But if you're, self, if you're experiencing self-worth blockages, definitely get the Bird of Paradise candle going before you start burning the candles or working with a candle magic jar for attracting love in or else you might find yourself in repetitive patterns if you need any help with anything you guys you already know i'm here the one spot that you can find me is at bahadilife.com that's my home base that's where i do all of my work all of my magic and i work with you directly in setting intentions there's custom spaces and slots available for you so definitely capitalize on that if it's look ten of cups you guys ten of cups is the base this reading literally happily ever after let's just manifest that like it's just time it's just time. What else are we going to do with Neptune transit and Pisces? Neptune transiting Pisces, I mean, it has happily ever after written all over it. And Leo energy, come on, we're there. We're there. If you're working on children, that's another thing too. Creativity, oh my God, this is an amazing moon for um, manifesting little ones or creative projects or releasing a tarot deck, anything like that. Or publishing your book, which is exactly what I'm working on. Links for that are down below. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sending you all my love. Full moon's blessings to each of you. Let me know down in the comments what it is that you're manifesting. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing, all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Mahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.